So in this video, a little bit more visual fun, we're going to talk about CSS transforms. We've got here a page with three divs inside of it, with the classes box, and then one, two, and three are the different classes to differentiate them. So the same styles are applied to all the boxes, and then we've got some transforms applied to the different boxes. When I hover over, I'm adding an outline and changing the opacity on these ones. So if we come over here, you can see that I'm adding the gold outline and I'm changing the opacity to 50%. So we've got an interesting visual effect going on here with the three different things. I could turn these into links. It would create a, an interesting navigation menu. But let's dive into what the transforms are actually doing. So we can apply one transform on its own transform property and then we have a list of potential values that we can use for the transforms here we have rotate if I can spell it there we go and you put in a number with degrees or alternatively instead of degrees you can put in the number of turns so I can say two turns 4.5 turns 5.6 turns so that's each one turn is 360 degrees or if you uh, prefer you can use radians so we can say 3.14 radians there we go I want to turn 180 degrees so this is roughly 180 degrees so rotate is the first one we've got translate now this is going to move the box so whatever your element is this is going to move it in the XY direction uh, I'm just talking about 2D transforms in this example. So we can say translate, I want to move it 100 pixels in the X direction, and then negative 400 pixels in the Y direction. Or there are translate X and translate Y methods as well. Uh, scale. And we can again use the one scale property, or there is a scale X and a scale Y. Inside of these, we use a multiplying factor. So I can say that I want to increase by a factor of two both sides, which is what I'm doing right here. I'm saying in the X direction, so horizontally, I want to double the size of this. If I put this back to one, let's watch the change here so you can see. Okay, in the x direction, this is 1, there's 150%, there's 200%, which is what I had, and in the y direction, I went from 1.0 to 1.5. So I, ex I stretched it in the y direction, that's vertically that I'm changing it. Um, rotate, well we could add that onto here as well just so you can see what it looks like. We can rotate 30 degrees. A little difficult to see on that one. I'll do it on a different different one right here. So instead of doing this transform skew, I will rotate 30 degrees. There. So you can see this rotated clockwise. Positive numbers are clockwise. 30 degrees. I can put in any number I want, any number of degrees, and it's going to rotate. Again, we could put in radians as well. So 3.1415 and so on, radians. There we go, there's 180 degrees. It's rotated 1 pi radians. Or turns. One point five. So it's 360 degrees and then the extra 180. So rotate, uh, scale we've talked about, translate, let's do that one. So we can enter two numbers here, one for the X, one for the Y. So I'm going to say I want it to move over in this direction, in the X direction, let's say 300 pixels. There it is. And then in the Y direction, I'm going to move upwards, so negative 200 pixels. There we are. Over 300 and up 200. That's my translate. You can put one value in here and that will default to the x value, or you can leave it as one and say 
I want translate x or translate y. So it moved it down 300 or negative. We'll move it up 300. So that's translate, rotate, scale, skew. Usually you use skew x or skew y. With these ones, we're adding in degrees. So going back to what I had originally here, I was saying I wanted to skew it in the x direction. Now, with the x direction, if I put in, let's say, 40 degrees, now you can see what's happened here is the top and bottom have stayed parallel to where they originally were. And this angle, if I draw a perpendicular line to the bottom here, I've gone over 40 degrees. So that's 40 degrees, and this is 40 degrees right here. Negative 40 degrees would be in the opposite direction. So I've moved it to the right 40 degrees. The top is moved to the right, the bottom 40 degrees that way. So that angle right there is the 40 degrees. Skew y, what we're doing is we are moving the sides up and down. So this angle right here, this is a 40 degree angle off the perpendicular. And at the bottom, this is a 40 degree angle off the perpendicular. So my 40 gave this kind of effect where I was lifting this side up, bringing this one down, lifted this one up. I scaled this one in the y direction right here. I was just playing with the numbers to get something that matched up here. And with this one, we've got the effect where oh, there we go. We have the effect with the hovers. And you can see the blue line comes almost down to the end there. I could play with the uh, scaling in the y direction to increase it a little bit. So if I did, let's say 1.7, that sticks out the bottom. Go 1.6, 1.55. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's pretty close to right there. Now, we've got another property that we've got on this number one that is helping me with these scaling numbers. And that is this transform origin property. With the transform origin, we can say where we want to move away from. So this is the one point where all of the scaling, all of the rotating, this all takes place from. We have the left edge, so from this left edge and negative 100 pixels, well, let's, if I put this down to zero, let's see the difference. And we'll, uh, yeah, here, I'll comment out this line. We'll keep it with one property at a time to make this easier to see. So transform, we'll do the scale Y. make it 1.5. So we're stretching it. I'll comment that out. Now as we take it from this to this, you can see that we're moving away from the center point. That is the default for the transform origin. Moving away from the center point. If we change that and we say that the transform origin is going to be the left edge zero pixels. That's the same as saying top. I'm moving away from this point right here. So left top, now when I scale, I'm moving away from that top left corner. And we can change this. We can say, all right, from the left bottom. Now as we turn this on and off, we're moving up away from that point. So you can play with this. You can change where you want it to be. It can even be some value that's not here. Maybe I want to push it down away from this original point. So right now it's at zero. This is where it's moving away from. I could put negative 100 pixels. There we are. And we're pushing it down away from this original point. So you can see it shifts down as well as increasing in size because I have a number that's 100 pixels above the top edge. If I used positive numbers, I'd be talking about numbers that are below that point. Okay, 
So we've got skew, we've got rotate, we've got scale, we've got translate, and the transform origin. And those things all together are going to give us all kinds of different effects. If you want to do multiple transforms on elements, then this is the way you write them. You have to put spaces between them, not commas, but spaces, because all of these things are going to be applied. And one thing to keep in mind is if you were doing something on a hover, so let's do a one colon hover, for this to work properly in the browser, if I was going to change something, even if I'm only changing one of these properties, I have to make sure to put all three of them in here. So I could put this back to one. I'm only changing the one property, but when I come over here, there we go. I'm just changing the scale X, but all three properties need to be there. If I don't have all three properties, a lot of the browsers will uh, kick up a fuss about that. Now this one's working fine, but I have seen this fail, uh, especially when working with transitions. So avoid doing this. If you are going to transform and have a different effect, then you should have all the same properties listed here. All right, and that's it. That's 2D transforms with CSS. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.